So, can houses be leasehold and freehold at the same time? Short answer is yes. Uh, I'll explain why this can happen and what you can do if you want to to change it, uh, and a couple of checks that you need to do just to be on the safe side. Straight after this intro. I'm Tim Hill, internet entrepreneur, property investor, and author of How to Really Buy a Property. No. It's not one of those books that goes on and on about how you can make millions investing in property and all you have to do is go on my course to learn the secrets and then you go on my course and you find out that you have to go on my master course to learn the real secrets. None of that. If you have decided to buy a property, no matter what your motivation, then how to really buy a property is the smart way to do it and it will save you time, money and stress. Okay. So probably if you're coming across a house that is both leasehold and freehold, what's happened, and it's usually way back in the distant past, is the person who owned the house said to somebody, OK, you can live in this house for 99 years if you pay me this much money. Uh, then that person became a leaseholder. And the person who did own the house still does own the house. They own the kind of bricks and mortar. They own the land underneath. They are the freeholder. Uh, the leaseholder isn't a tenant. He's not paying, you know, monthly or uh, uh, kind of monthly or annual rental fee. Although I'll come to that in a minute. But he's not doing that. He's paid this block of cash for the right to live in that property for a certain number of years. Uh, we'll call it 99 years here. It could be any number of years. It could be 25, could be 250, whatever. Right. Uh, now, there is usually a little bit of money to be paid uh, every year. It's called ground rent. And the leaseholder plays that to the freeholder. Could be 10 quid. It could be 250 quid. In a few cases, it can be a lot of money. So you do need to check, uh, you know, that if, the freeholder is separate from the leasehold that you're buying, what it is that you're going to be paying every year. But usually this kind of question comes up because uh, the owner of the current property is both the leaseholder and the freeholder. So how does that come to pass? Well, uh, again, uh, way back in the past, probably the leaseholder has turned around to the freeholder and said, oh, I'd like to buy the freehold. Leaseholders generally have a motivation to do something like that because there's all sorts of restrictions on what a leaseholder can do. You know, they can't knock that wall through. They can't put an extension on the house. Lots of things they can't do unless the freeholder gives them permission. So wouldn't it be nice just to own the freehold? And let's say the freeholder says, OK, you know, for £5,000, you can have the, the freehold as well. So they do the deal. The legal paperwork is done. And that person becomes the leaseholder and the freeholder. Now, there is a legal process where it can all just be meshed together and the house becomes freehold and that's it. But, you know, most people would prefer to do something else like go and play a game of golf, go on holiday uh, or anything really than sit around with solicitors putting paperwork together to make a leasehold freehold house into a freehold and time passes by and it doesn't happen and then they come to sell and when they come to sell you as the buyer you're looking at this house that is both a leasehold house and a freehold house uh, there's only one really major careful check to do here and that's to look at the lease very carefully uh, because you have sometimes this kind of residue this leftover stuff let's say the old freeholder was tim's greedy property investments limited well, that was the freeholder, but I sold the freehold. Now, on the lease, it might still say that the leaseholder must pay me £1,000 a year. And that was never changed. So even though I'm no longer the freeholder, I've sold the freehold, you as the person buying the property would still be liable to pay me £1,000 a year. So just watch out for those things that kind of get left behind because the lease doesn't say you must pay the freeholder. It says you must pay that particular person or you must pay that particular company. 
Otherwise, in terms of the purchase, it's really no big deal. And your solicitor shouldn't have an issue with it, even though they might be a bit surprised. It's quite an unusual thing to come across. And then obviously your solicitor will probably say to you, you must merge these two things after you buy it and just tidy up the paperwork. You'll say, yeah, yeah, I'll definitely do that. And then like, after you buy, you know, I'm going to turn the paper off. Uh, and, and it never happens again until you come to sell and think, oh, I should have done that. And the buyer's all a bit worried about what's going on here. Uh, so <clears throat> that's the score with houses that are both freehold and leasehold. Don't let it put you off. Uh, check the lease carefully to make sure that any obligations in the lease are to the freeholder and not to who the freeholder was. And that's it. That's all for this short video. There's much more information in the book, How to Really Buy a Property. As always, if you found this information useful, please remember to subscribe, to share, to like, to do all those social media things. It all helps other people who need this information find it more easily. If you've got some specific questions which you'd like me to have a go at answering, please put them in the comments below and I'll try and get to them. And in the meantime, good luck with your property purchase.